Google just released some top level domains of .zip. That's the same file extension that you see whenever you're archiving files and you see it across different platforms like Linux, Mac, and Windows. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how this adds another attack method to hackers that are social engineering or trying to do phishing attempts. And I'll walk you through some examples. Um, and as a pen tester consultant, which I do these uh, social engineering campaigns illegally, um, I'll talk about how I see myself using these on my future engagements. So Google posted this on May 3rd, and what they did was they launched eight new top-level domains. Some of them aren't too concerning, or most of them rather, like .dev. The most concerning ones are the .zip and .move, because .move is a file extension for um, video, and .zip is very popular, especially whenever you're downloading files off the internet. That's going to be the one that we focus on in this video. And Google doesn't really give a good reason why they did this. Maybe they just weren't too aware of the concerns that this can bring. And it kind of sounds like they're doing it for the lols because under this section for dads, it's kind of like a joke, like, haha, look, now you can make a dot dad URL. And then on the here, they're like, well, let's do some for techies. So they did some file extensions like .zip, .move, .foo. It's like a real common thing in uh, coding, like just as a little temp, you just put .foo. So I'm guessing that they just didn't really see how concerning this can be for creating .zip. So that's what this is gonna cover. So to go over social engineering and a particular phishing, one of the things that you do before you officially launch your engagement if you is you do a setup phase. So you create your infrastructure and you grab your domain name that you're gonna be using as your phishing site. So normally what you would try to do as an attacker is you would try to create a domain name that's very similar to your scenario or the target company that you're trying to attack. So one of the common things is adding dashes to the URL or you can use other uncommon available top level domains. So instead of .com, which is already taken, you could look for .org or .net. And you're pretty much just not trying to make it so obvious that the site is actually a fake site. And what usually pairs with this is creating some sort of urgency. So it makes the user try to click that link before actually going through a little research and, and verifying that the link's actually correct. Now with the option of now having these .zip domain names, it kind of changes the method around where before you're trying to get the user to think that that URL link is actually good. But in this one, you're gonna be trying to change your scenarios to getting a user to believe that a file name is legit. So let's go through some examples so you can kind of see what I mean. So this page is the actual python.org website that has the links for downloading the zip file to get Python on Windows. So if we look at the actual link, you can see that it ends in .zip. So this is a real link to actually get Python for Windows. You can see it ends in the .zip because that's gonna be the file that we're downloading. So right here, what an attacker can do is they can grab this name right here as a domain. And then they'll, what they'll do is create a bunch of subdomains to make it look just like this. So let me type out what it can look like if the user, so the, the domain that the um, attacker would have is just this part right here. And what they can do is this. So you can see what they did is they added a bunch of subdomains and you could add hundreds of subdomains to an actual domain. And if you just quickly look at this, you'll see that it begins with python.org. You'll see that it has .zip, the same package as this one, and it looks very similar. The only difference is that it doesn't have the slashes because these are uh, file paths and these are all subdomains. So if you present a target with this and they actually go to this one and I have my host set up that way it, this is um, linking to my uh, attacker machine, you can see that it actually takes you to an actual URL and then you can have whatever here. So I just have a very basic um, file list where I just have a bunch of files listed. And this right here is a completely fake executable that I created. And in a real scenario, this would be malicious. So download a virus or begin to their C2 server, whatever it might be. But the idea here, or what I'm trying to focus on here is how um, adding a bunch of subdomains to these 
dot zip top level domains now make it look very similar to what a real link actually looks like plus since this whole thing is new a lot of users might not know that dot zip domains are now something to be worried about so whenever they do look at the domain and they see dot zip at the end they're like hey that's completely normal that's an actual file that can't be an actual website not knowing that now these are actually websites so again the focus here is now the method is going to be tricking users into thinking that files or actually actual files and not links to a website. So say something like this gets sent to a user's email in the payroll department. Um, of course, this would be changed to wherever the employee works or the scenario that it's gonna be. And the actual company is called XYZ Company. That's the actual name. So this right here, if the space was right here, this would be an actual path, an actual real path in the internal network. Now, if you add this space right here and you make this the link to payroll.zip, it looks just like the real path. However, this will be an actual link to payroll.zip, the website. So if we go there to payroll.zip, it'll look like an extracted zip file and it'll have whatever files you want in there. Again, these are all going to be um, malicious files, viruses, or whatever it may be. They're not actual dot um, Excel files. I mean, they could be with some uh, micros embedded into them, of course, to make it more real. Uh, but the idea here is that these will be malicious in some sort of way. But if we look back at the email, uh, you can see that this can very easily be um, overlooked and seen as an actual link and if they hover over this it will actually say payroll.zip um, it will say uh, http or whatever but um, it will say payroll.zip due to the scenario it might create more urgency to where a user might overlook that and as a pen tester consultant having done real engagements of social engineering where i actually do send out phishing emails and i do uh, phone call phishing these do work they actually do you have to think that a lot of people they aren't constantly security conscious. Uh, they're just going about the day trying to get their job done. They see an email like this, it looks legit. Maybe they were expecting some payroll stuff. So the last example was a scenario for email phishing. This one's gonna be voice phishing or vishing. And I'll talk about a scenario that I'll be using personally. And one thing about voice phishing is uh, whenever you call the user, one of the key moments is whenever you give them the URL to go to. So the scenario itself um, isn't too hard to make believable. They might still be a little bit on edge. So once you give them the link to go to is whenever it's a real turning point and that they can they can hear that URL and say, hey, that URL is not right. This is something fishy going on. Um, I don't believe you. They hang up or they start interrogating you or whatever. So whenever you give them the actual um, address to go to is, is really important. And that's why I think this is going to be a good method because um, what you're going to do here in these scenarios is you're going to tell them that they need to go to an internal share and you're just going to give them the name of the zip file to go to and that's it it's not going to be any sketchy url or anything like that you're trying to sell them that they need to get this file so on the right side is going to be my cali or attacker machine and i'll show you how i hosted the uh, page that you saw a little while ago um, and i'll show you the attack method for sending them to an http site along with sending them to an SMB share to get their NTLM hash. So what we'll do first is uh, we'll do the HTTP service. So I'm just gonna create a very simple. So first, let me just show you what I have on this directory, uh, just a couple of files. These would be the malicious files, of course, and then I'm just gonna start uh, just an HTTP server on there. So a very common scenario is um, a user getting called by what they say is um, IT or IT security or whoever and telling them that, that they need to update their system, that there might have been an issue during the update last night, and they need to uh, get the new software to download. Again, these scenarios aren't anything groundbreaking. These are pretty well known, um, but the point of this is just to show you how now um, there's new methods on um, or modifications to these old classics and uh, what you might see in the real world now. So uh, they call the user, they tell them that they need to download a new file. The old way would be to direct them to the website, but now you can give the explanation or steps of saying, hey, um, open up File Explorer. Most people are familiar with File Explorer, so where all your files are. So open up File Explorer and then go to uh, software.zip and the 
software.zip would be your um, domain that you purchased. So just go to software.zip. And as you can see, what it did was it opened up a web browser because what it does is this right here is actually a search. So whenever you're typing right here, um, it's actually a search and it will search for that file. And if it's not there, then of course it would um, open up a web browser and then um, go to that address. And on the right, you can see that I got some uh, requests and uh, you can see on the left that those files that I have hosted are now available and you tell them, hey, um, for example, say it was Teams, uh, click the Teams and then download that one. And from the user's perspective, all they did was open up File Explorer, which is completely normal, and then enter a zip name. That doesn't sound malicious at all. If I were to say open up a web browser and go to xyzcompany-software.com, then they'll be like, hey, I've never heard of that web address. That's very suspicious. But now going through the File Explorer, um, entering just that file name, I believe that it would be a lot more believable and it will trick a lot more users. Now, another option, just modifying it, instead of doing HTTP, we're now gonna do SMB, and we're gonna get the NTLM hash from them. So what we'll first do is uh, start an NPacket SMB server. Um, all it does is just captures the hash because the user will be authenticating um, to our rogue SMB server, so we'll be capturing the authentication hash. Uh, but this right here and this doesn't matter either. We're just trying to get them to um, enter it right here and then we'll capture it regardless. So you'll see that I won't even do the test. So we have our SMB server started and um, here we'll tell them to go to an internal share um, that we have the software at. So for doing internal share, you do slash slash and then the same software.zip. And then once you do the slash at the end, you'll see that it makes the authentication and then you get the hash of that user. In this case, is Gandalf. My whole environment is Lord of the Rings theme, so that's where that user came from. But you can see that um, they don't have to make a connection to, or they don't have a web browser open for the scenario. They just strictly deal with the file explorer and doing something that's normal, which is accessing an internal share. Uh, but you can see that on the right, we actually do something pretty important, which is grabbing that um, NTLM hash, which you can crack on offline um, and get their password. And to explain again why this right here, um, entering the .zip domain opens up a web, web browser or makes a connection to the SMB service, is this bar right here is just the same run search bar. So if you do uh, run, you can see type the name of a program or a folder document or internet resource and windows will open it so um, and on the left i have the smb service running to capture the ntlm hash um, and if you do the software.zip and then the slash you'll see the connection on the left grabbing the ntlm hash as well um, so this right here is happening in the file explorer search bar as well uh, so that's the reason why um, going to the file explorer and entering the .zip domain will still capture the MTLM hash or the traffic from the user. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's been talked about a lot in the InfoSec community, just been a couple of days. And these are just my initial thoughts on why this is uh, pretty concerning or at least alarming. Um, again, I don't think the world's gonna all of a sudden get hacked, um, like everyone's gonna get hacked, but um, I do see this as another method to attackers. Um, just think of it as, I guess, pen testers. You just have a lot of tools. I think this is just gonna be another tool that um, attackers can use to try to fist users. And uh, the important thing here is just spreading awareness about this. So for example, like us in IT or info security, um, we're learning about this pretty recently or pr uh, pretty um, quickly. But uh, the typical users that get targeted, like people um, in other departments at a company that aren't IT, they don't know that .zip is now a domain and to be cautious of .zip domains uh, whenever they see them, um, in links. So at the least, this is just to spread awareness. So thanks for watching.